So it's been a while now since I've done an exposure test video on this channel. In the past, the three stocks that we checked out were all color negative, but for a while now, I wanted to do one of these tests using slide film just to see how far it can be pushed. So recently I picked up a few rolls of Kodak's new Ektachrome in 120 format, and I figured that there's probably no better reversal stock to start with for one of these tests than the latest one to hit the market. So if you missed the previous tests, they're definitely worth checking out. But basically my approach has always been just to take a particular film stock and see how far it can be both under and overexposed before it starts to fall apart. And when it comes to slide film, I actually haven't shot any of this since I got back into film photography, but I've been meaning to just play around with a few and see if there's any looks that appeal to me. So I figured a really good place to start is to do one of these exposure test videos just to see how much room we really have when working with reversal film. In previous tests, we saw how flexible negative film was, especially when dealing with overexposure. But you always hear about how unforgiving slide film is and how you have to really nail your exposure. So I figured this would be a great test to really see how much room we do or don't have. So as mentioned today, we're gonna run a roll of the new Ektachrome through the Yashica Mat 124G and just see how it deals with different exposure scenarios. And at the very least, I hope that this test helps anyone who's thinking of shooting with reversal film just feel a little bit more confident. So let's go do the test. Okay, so using the backyard studio here today because uh, a little limited with options of where we can actually go, but uh, it's gonna work just fine. Really simple setup here. So got the Yashica Mat 124G set up here and then the composition is really straightforward. Just have the house back there, the shed, some nice foreground shadows. Um, gives a nice kind of range of tones to work with here. Gonna meter out there in the bright sun just using the incident meter as Conic L308S. Pretty straightforward exposure to determine today with it being a full sun day out. And we'll start with that and see where it goes. And yeah, if you haven't watched one of these before, uh, they're really straightforward. So like I said, metered for the sun, we're gonna get our base reading. We're gonna start with that as our normal exposure. And then from there, we're gonna go probably three stops under for the slide film. So one, two, three, and then we'll probably do four stops of overexposure in increments. And that should give us a pretty nice range um, of differences to take a look at when we're finished. So let's get started. Okay, so just finished this roll. Um, I did film it, but the camera messed up. So unfortunately, you guys aren't gonna be able to see it, but you didn't really miss much. I just did exactly what I said I was going to do. One uh, normal exposure, three under, and then four over for a total of eight. So I should have four images left on this because six by six, you get 12. So I'm gonna go for a quick walk, finish off the roll, uh, just cause I've never shot Ektachrome before and then send it out. We'll take a look at the results. Okay, so just got the scans back from the lab. We're gonna jump into things. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the scans exactly how I got them back first. Um, the only thing I did is I warmed them all up a little bit, uh, but it's the same across the board. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna take a few of the images and edit them just to see kind of what we can save or what can be brought back and, and what can't be brought back and just what the files are like to work with. And these were all scanned using a Hasselblad Flextite 16-bit uh, TIFF just at the lab that I go to. and. You know, before doing this test, I was pretty sure that anything kind of plus or minus one exposure was gonna be unusable. But, you know, I still think it's really important to do this kind of stuff just because it helps you become a better photographer, just understanding how different film stocks react and, you know, how to read light and how to expose better and stuff like that. So anyways, let's jump into things. Okay, so we got the first image here. And I mean, pretty straightforward, looks good. The tones are nice uh, in the grass and on the side of the house um, and, in the sky as well. We did meet her out in the sun, so this isn't too surprising. Uh, the shadows aren't bad, they're a little dark, but again, this was a full Sunday when we shot this, so that's not too much of a shock. So this is the first underexposed image, and the tones are actually are still really nice on the grass. The sky is actually uh, even a little bit nicer in this one, uh, just a little bit darker. Uh, the shadows are starting to get pretty kind of blocked up. Um, I will be curious afterwards when we jump into a few of these images to edit them just to see uh, how much we could save in this image uh, and if those shadows can be opened up without bringing in too much noise. But not bad, but you can tell it definitely is um, starting to lose some information. 
Okay, so next up we have two stops under, and yeah, this is getting really dark. You know, the grass and the sky and the side of the building um, are definitely underexposed now. Uh, obviously details still there, but the shadow areas are becoming very, very dark, and I bet afterwards when we check this out, when we go to edit these, uh, that's probably just gonna all be noise when we try to open those up. And then this is three stops under, no shock here whatsoever. Uh, not a lot of information going on in this image. I would almost can guarantee that this one uh, is going to be pretty much a toss away when it comes to editing. I don't think there's gonna be much bringing any of this back, uh, which makes sense because we're three stops under, almost no information was recorded in those shadow areas whatsoever. Okay, so let's go to the first stop over. So this one isn't too bad. Um, the grass and the sky and the side of the house, uh, it's still lots of information there. Um, the shadows obviously are a little nicer in this one because it's one stop overexposed from out in the sun. Uh, but it looks like the image is starting to take on a little bit of kind of like a, a warm cast to it. Um, again, it'll be interesting to see specifically with this image and the one stop under, um, you know, how much these can be tweaked to kind of look like the normal exposure. So shadows are, are pretty nice in this one, but the rest of the image is starting to get a little strange. So two stops over, same thing, obviously not a surprise here. Uh, getting quite a bit more information in those shadows, but the sky, the side of the house, the grass, anything out in the sun where we exposed, uh, you can tell that it's starting to lose information and that there wasn't much there to be scanned. Three stops over, almost no information now in that sky. Uh, shadow areas are opening up even more, but yeah, the image is just becoming pretty bad, which again, is not uh, shocking whatsoever. And then four stops over, yeah, pretty much completely unusable. Uh, again, no shock here. You know, there wasn't a second where I thought we could overexpose slide film by four stops and have any decent results. Okay, so let's go ahead now and jump into Lightroom. And I'm really curious, um, mostly with the one stop under and the one stop over, just to see kind of how workable those images are, just because um, that's kind of what I was anticipating uh, the flexibility, the range would be uh, working with this film. Uh, but let's start maybe by, let's go two stops under. I'm just really curious um, with this image specifically, um, you know, the shadows are really crushed, but let's see if we if we had this image, what we could do to it, um, and if there's any hope trying to open up uh, and get some of that information back. So first off, let's just increase the exposure. Uh, you can see already, no surprise, that these shadow areas are really kind of flat and there's gonna be a lot of noise in them. So for fun, let's just crank these shadows right open uh, and let's kind of zoom in. And yeah, no shock, it's all pretty much digital noise in there. Uh, and yeah, the contrast in the image is, is really kind of flat and not too pleasing whatsoever. So, you know, unusable, obviously three stops under, we'll look at it, gonna be kind of pointless though. You know, no information there. As soon as you jack up that exposure, it is just noise because obviously the scanner had no information to read. But let's go ahead now and let's check out this is one stop under. So we'll go to the next one. This is our normal exposure. One stop under right here. Like I said, I really like the sky. The tones are really nice on the side of the uh, house here as well. Same with the grass. Uh, they're all just a little, little bit darker, but let's say we had an image like this that was one stop underexposed. Um, could we, you know, oh, bring some of this information back? What could we do with this? So, gonna bring the exposure up a bit. Let's just open these shadows way up just to get a feel for it. So not bad, um, you know, they are getting noisy for sure. Not that you would keep them this high, but just to get a feel for, you know, what is there if you wanted to bring some of that information up. Um, but we are starting to kind of lose some of that contrast. It is kind of flat. We'll bring these blacks down. Maybe open these shadows up a bit more. Let's zoom out here. Bring that exposure up a bit more. Highlights down a bit. So not bad. I mean, 
So going into this test, you know, you always hear about how you really got to nail your exposure with slide film. And obviously uh, I didn't doubt that. Um, this is kind of showing me, you know, one stop under is, is workable for sure uh, in a pinch, but uh, even at one stop under these shadowed areas are becoming noisy. Nowhere near as bad as the, the two stops under. Um, and like I said, you could work with it if you wanted, but probably avoid it if possible, but not a throwaway by any means. So here's the normal exposure. So what I am curious about with this is what we could do with this when we edit it. And for me, um, probably what I'd want is I'd want to bring the highlights down just a little bit. Um, the image looks nice. I would want a little more detail in those shadows. So let's see what it's like with this uh, properly exposed one if we just open those shadows right up. And you'll see it's a lot nicer down here in this area. Even in the one stop under, we were getting a lot of noise down here when we cranked those shadows right open. But it seems like in this normal exposure, there is uh, a lot of room to, to kind of play afterwards when you're editing uh, to just get the tones where you want, want them to be. So let's bring those down a little bit because for me, the image was a little too contrasty. We'll bring the blacks down now though. Obviously again, we're dealing with, you know, a mid afternoon sunny day. So the contrast levels are really high, but uh, yeah, not bad. It seems like there's enough flexibility in this normal exposure to, uh, you know, play with the tones and, and kind of shape this image a little bit and, you know, open up those shadows a bit and it still stays pretty clean. So that's cool. Okay. so. This is the one stop over, and I am curious about this to see what we can uh, do with it. Obviously, the shadowed areas are going to be nice in this one because a little bit more uh, exposed towards the shadows. So lots of information there to play with. Um, but let's see if we try to just bring this down. We're going to lose a little bit of that warmth. Uh, bring that exposure up a bit. blacks down a bit. So not bad. I mean, the shadows are a lot nicer uh, than the one stop under, obviously, which isn't a surprise. Um, and you know, even just with a few quick edits here, um, the sky isn't bad. I, you, I feel like you would have to still play, maybe dig into the curves a little bit and play with uh, color cast a bit because even though I took away some of that warmth, now, you know, the mid-tones and the shadows in this area are pretty blue, even though the sky looks better. Um, but it seems like the one stop over is going to be a lot more workable uh, than the one stop under just because those shadows stay uh, a little bit cleaner. Although that being said, you know, the tones, like the mid-tones and the highlights aren't as nice, but you know, again, not a throwaway by any means. Okay, so let's just jump up to three stops over. Um, and this isn't gonna be a surprise. You know, the information is pretty much gone. As soon as we start trying to pull it back, I mean, the shadow areas are really nice, which again, isn't a surprise, but you know, the sky is just got a really weird kind of cast going to it now. You can tell there was probably no information right in this area when this was getting scanned. So interesting to see these results. Um, I am gonna link to the unedited uh, TIFFs in the description below. So definitely check them out and you can mess around with them a little bit. Obviously we just did some quick edits here. So, you know, have a go and then you can come up with your own conclusion on this test. But, you know, for me, I think what I take away from this is what you always hear. You wanna nail your exposure working with slide film. And, you know, the buffer that I would probably give myself is maybe half a stop either way, uh, you know, maybe, one stop over, but it is interesting to see that at one stop under, one stop over, the files are still very much workable uh, and they aren't throwaways whatsoever. But by far the nicest image with the best color uh, and the most kind of flexibility was that uh, normal exposure that we metered out in the sun. So anyways, I hope that this helps anyone who was curious about working with slide film or the new Ektachrome and maybe gives you a bit more confidence going out to shoot this type of film for your first time. But anyways, as always, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, it's where I post all of my recent work quite often. Uh, link is in the description below. So definitely check it out. And until next time, thank you guys. We'll see you soon.